Hi, good morning, and welcome to another edition of Market Analysis for today, February 21st. I'm Giovanni Benacor, analyst, trader, and operator with Vantage Markets, as well as an educator. Well, the talk of the town through all of 2022 was how badly stocks were doing, but that's been reversed over the last seven weeks. Indices are all moving up and to the right so far, and investors are piling back into some of the biggest losers of last year like crypto, electric vehicle stocks, and tech. Stranger still is how hype only seems to be growing despite the Fed's insistence that tough monetary policy is still on the way, which raises the odds of a recession. Between the central bank, economy, and markets, not only are none of those things on the same page, they don't even seem to be part of the same story. When you weigh the surprising strength of the economy against still hot inflation and a soaring equities market, nothing seems to make sense. The stock market has been completely flipped upside down so far in 2023. The same risky assets that took a walloping last year are staging a comeback, even as the Fed readies more interest rate hikes. The FOMO trade, fear of missing out, seems to be back, illustrated by the craze of for AI stocks spared by ChatGPT, but the, also the renewed frenzy for things like MEM stocks and crypto. This is the type of trading behavior you expect to see when interest rates are closer to zero than 5%. The rally in speculative assets is a rebuff of Jerome Powell's messaging that the central bank's inflation battle isn't done. There is an old adage, don't fight the Fed, but this behavior is not just fighting but also taunting the Fed with crypto, mem stocks, and unprofitable companies responding best to Fed communications. Don't forget, too, that the Fed has been reducing its balance sheet by roughly $100 billion each month, but markets are still acting like they aren't having liquidity pulled out from under them. The errant investor behavior foreshadows a plunge in the stock market. Based on historical regressions, the move in the two-year interest rates since the very first Fed meetings should result in a 5 to negative 10% sell-off in the NASDAQ. The risk-reward of holding bonds at this level of short-term yields looks better than equity than any time since the great financial crisis. Even though it's at the end of the week, the Fed's preferred inflation metric is the place to start. The core personal consumption expenditures, PCE, price index due Friday, will reveal just how sticky or otherwise inflation is proving. After hotter than expected consumer and producer prices, the PCE print could cement the narrative that disinflation is slowing. Economists expect core PCA to fall to an annual rate of 4.3% from 4.4% in December, a slowdown compared with previous monthly declines. Anything hotter, implying the Fed's battle against inflation has further to run, could really spook markets. But before that, though, a flurry of retail earnings would provide a health check on the strength of the consumer. The latest Fed minutes set to be released Wednesday may be all news particularly given the raft of economic data investors have had to digest since the central bank's January 31st to February 1st meeting. However, they still have the potential to move markets. The Reserve Bank of Australia's minutes today revealed members considered a 50 basis points hike at its last meeting before settling on a 25 basis points hike. In conclusion, we are dealing with speculative frenzy. Markets should enter into a cyclical bear market, which could last 18 months. So with that being said, let's take a look at what we can expect from the market today. So uh, looking at our, at our chart on Friday, we closed, no, we closed down, okay? And then yesterday, even though it was first of the day, it was very little volume. But however, it actually also, it is kind of, Open it did open briefly, uh, you know, where it closed on Friday because this opened one in 12.374 and on Friday it closed at 12.383. So, however, however, like it is, it, it did open lower than it, that it closed on Friday. So, that momentum will spill over into the week. Uh, so when we see when the market opens up, we are expected to trade lower when we come in and close this gap. We have the 21 moving average above a market, so that could act as a resistance, a dynamic resistance. The RSI is pointing lower, so we could come in, try to attempt to close this gap, and then just come back, 
come right back down to towards 12,000. The S&P 4,000 will be that psychological level. RSI is pointing lower. The Dow is the one that's really uh, going to be opening to a downside. 3350 is my support. I'm pretty more sure that we will reach that. So I'm selling all the equities. Crude oil is really, I'm looking for actually to crude oil, for crude oil to trade within yesterday's range. So, so far it is looking to trade higher, even though we did open lower. So uh, on Friday we did close lower, but yesterday we opened higher. Okay, so that could be is smack right smack in the middle of Friday's range. Hmm. This, this yeah, this could today this week crude oil obviously we are expecting demand to increase. So being bullish on crude oil, it could be a, a good scenario. But keep your powder dry. So crude not gas, net gas. It could probably enter another one of those ranging scenarios. Two two dollars is my range, but two twenty. Around 220 between 2,250 is gonna stay. Uh, then we have here gold. A gold, however, is looking to stay steadily right around the 1830 marker. Uh, it'll it'll probably just be be bouncing off off of, of this very tight range, uh, depending on what the market does. Actually, the dollar index does. Uh, the RSI is pointing lower, so. 1800 is my support. I don't think you know, we come down towards it. Uh, anything like 1830, perhaps you could probably retest that low. So keep that in, in your radar. Uh, silver, $22 is my resistance. Uh, I, I, again, we could we could probably move higher than just find that resistance and then trade back down again. Copper, copper has had a nice little run uh, to the upside. 425 is my resistance. Uh, but I'm looking at 420 initially, my first resistance, and 4100 $4.10 is my support. Then Bitcoin, Bitcoin is you know really looking to stay above the 24,000 marker below the 25,000, which has been set as a roof so far. It has violated several times that, that resistance. Will it come back and reset it again? Most likely. Then we have the Euro, which is looking to stay above 106. Uh, around the 106.50 marker, but that all depends on what could happen with the dollar index. The pound is did rebound it up to 120, looking move, move higher. The resist the uh, 21 day moving average is acting as a, that resistance, which market came up towards towards it. So I'm looking for the pound to look to look to trade further higher if the dollar index moves lower if the dollar index moves higher then that's not going to happen so the dollar index continues to move lower and as it, it trades back down to one towards the 103.50 then we'll see yeah the pound rise euro rise gold silver perhaps even copper rise crude oil rise if it does not and it moves higher towards the back to 104.50 then we'll see uh that you know gold would probably come and test at 1800 Silver twenty one hundred twenty one dollars, the copper four ten. Then we'll have we'll see the euro, the, the pound trade to one hundred six one twenty one. Okay, well that's that's my the scenario for today. I am selling the indices at the open, and so that's what I'm going to be doing. Have a nice trading day, and I'll see you tomorrow.